everyone has different lists of priorities when they're all buying a brand new car, like this Toyota Camry that we just purchased. We had to go and shop for some of its competitors from Hyundai Kia, specifically Toyota's Camry. Key competition is the Honda Accord and always has been. So why in fact did we end up buying this Toyota Camry? There's a whole host of reasons for that. So I'm gonna share with you guys why in fact we decided to buy the Toyota Camry for a daily driver as opposed to a Honda Accord. Let's get into it now. Life's too short to drive boring cars. Let's take this from the top. We'll talk about some of the competition. Hyundai, Kia. Clearly, a lot of people love the brands. For me personally, there's been so many problems with easy break-ins, with issues from quality control on the engine manufacturing perspective, and some of the engines literally burning roadside. We also gotta talk about electric problems, trailer tow hitch issues, and just the overall quality control of most of those vehicles from Hyundai and Kia just aren't where they need to be when you wanna compare with the likes of the Toyotas and Hondas of the world. Then we look at this car here. We have a Toyota Camry. We bought this brand new 2022. We got it in. Base MSRP US dollars is about $25,000. Now this has a slight upgrade. Then we talk about Honda Accord. Well, Honda Accords typically start a little bit more money. You're gonna expect to pay base price a couple or two, three thousand dollars more than the base Camry, and some of their models escalate even further. So if you're looking for something more economical and still get all the same amenities because they're seriously in the same class, that's partially why we went with the Toyota Camry. So let's start talking about the exterior styling. I personally love the Camry. I think it looks great with this newer revised front end on these vehicles. Obviously, if you're talking about Lexus, which a lot of these are based on, Lexus has that big mouth grill on the front that a lot of people don't particularly love. But I love some of the features on these cars. To me, I love the clean headlights. They have a real sleek look to them. Although it's a little bit on the fake side, you have these grills on the front that makes the car look very, very aggressive. If you look at it from the side, it looks substantially sharper and more dialed in. And I definitely love the front end and the front finishing of the Toyota Camry better than the Honda Accord. And I really like the tail finish of these cars too. I mean, what we did was we upgraded. And as I mentioned earlier, this is not the base model. SE is the base model, but we bought the all wheel drive. So in fact, you do have snow and ice capability. And when you compare it to Honda, I'm not a real big fan of the Honda's exterior finishing, especially at the front. You have that sort of bull nose look to it now on the latest models, not loving that all that much. So what about the drivetrains? We have to talk about the engines and the drivetrains because that's a key element as to how you make your selection. One key selling feature to the Toyota here as we look under the hood is this drivetrain. It's not a real hot rod, but again, we're not buying the Ferrari fire-breathing dragon to take out to the racetrack. This is a car that we bought with the intent of moving people reliably down the road for minimal cost and expense. But look at that engine. What we're looking at here is a two and a half liter four cylinder engine, naturally aspirated. Again, no turbos, no supercharging, very simple. And it's made it up to this automatic transmission behind that. Now the win here is that it still makes 200 horsepower easily and the engine's not stressed or strained. And that's quite different from Honda's approach. Honda has that 1.5 liter turbo four cylinder engine and it's unfortunately had a, quite a reputation of reliability concerns. Fuel and oil dilution issues with some of those earlier 1.5s and now you have to actually mitigate that by the type of oil and the frequency and the way you warm your car up. And it becomes more of a management with that vehicle just to keep it running properly. They also have larger engines that produce more power, but so does the Toyota and the Toyota's engine of choice. This isn't it here, but their choice of engine would be in the XSE. You can get the V6, three and a half liters that makes about 300 horsepower. That is a winning engine combination. Again, no turbos. It's naturally aspirated for maximum reliability. Of these cars are both very easy to maintain. You look at fittings like that, we always talk about these all tension spring clamps for your cooling system and hoses. That's a norm for a lot of Toyotas and Hondas. This just means it's a rubber hose, goes right up barbed on there and that fitting. So minimal leaks and problems like you have with a lot of German cars. The same thing would apply for Hondas. So apart from that 1.5 liter turbo four that also makes about 200 horse and has some of the reliability concerns, the drivetrains are more or less exchanging punches and they're more or less the same type of experience. What about the rest? I mean, it is a four-door sedan, so space is a big factor. Let's look in the back. And in the Camry, it has a lot of space. I mean, as you can see, you've got room for three in the back here. You've got a full down split in the middle. And of course, you have lots of great foot room. But you'll notice you do get a little bit thin here when the front seats get pushed back. You do have a little bit of thin space here for taller passengers in the back seat. As you can see now I've got a little bit of a 
space limitation here and the headroom is quite adequate as well. What about the front? You can see there's absolutely vault-like space here. You have lots of foot room here when the seats push back, lots of space. And while I'm not a tall guy, you've got to think, say, close to about six foot. There's lots of space in this car, especially in the front. It's great. Honda Accord, slightly smaller in the front, bigger in the rear. Then we look at the interior. I will say that the Toyota has a slightly poor version of what we see in the infotainment system where Honda's is a little bit improved over what we're seeing in Toyota's products. And of course, the older version of this is in seated further down. This is a nicer update, but still, the Honda's version is a little bit nicer. I would say the interior finishing's nicer on the Toyota as well. This was a selling feature for me. You get a variety of different textures and tones. This plastic, although it's smooth, it has a textured look to it. You have this high gloss piano type finishing, but it has a sparkle in it. It's beautiful, actually. This rubber and plastic in the interior of the Toyota Camry and the Accord are pretty comparable. I do like the Camry slightly better, though, from the fit and finish perspective. We have heated seats, which is nice for the driver and the passenger. We have that automatic, which I mentioned, CVT, and of course, dual climate control here, or dual heat controls. And everything's integrated very nicely. It's a very clean looking design. Start stop like almost every vehicle today. It's just an overall really clean look. We have a brushed aluminum trim. We have beautiful sunshade like that. We can slide that back and forth. And of course we have the sunroof, which is nice. What about reliability? Because obviously a car like this, you just want it to go and go and go. And Hondas and Toyotas are typically very, very close in terms of overall reliability. Well, let's quote Repair Pal as saying, both the Toyota Camry and the latest model Honda Accord for 2023 both rank at about 4 out of 5 star. Annual servicing costs for the Toyota Camry like this is expected to be about 388 bucks, whereas the Honda Accord is about 400 bucks. Now they both expect to meet the shop about 0.3 times in one year. So they're both relatively reliable and they both rank very, very well. Now, on the other hand, overall reliability, we know when we talk about Camrys as ranking between one, two, and three. So you always have Lexus, Toyota, and as well now Mazda are the top three. Oddly enough, Consumer Reports even stuffs BMW up close to number three now, which is mind blowing to me, but clearly that's a little bit skewed. And in my opinion, from my personal experience, even though BMW has certainly stepped up their game and reliability with some of their latest B48s and B58 engines, the fact of the matter remains, once you hit about five years of age, your warranty's gone, that's when all your cooling system factors pump in. And that's when some of your leaks start kicking in and that's when you'll start to see some of these issues over and over and over again where these are the types of vehicles here that will not experience those types of issues you won't have those nasty leaks because of plastic fittings that expand and crack like you'll find in a bmw or a benz you have a simple rubber hose here all tension clamp and no problems with that said though now toyota has finally stepped into an electric water pump and bmw is getting away from that because that was a problem especially when you're dealing with turbo engines go and put an electric water pump next to a hot cooling system them next to a hot turbo and it's a recipe for disaster some of the early bmws with electric water pumps were only getting about 80 90 100 000 kilometers out of a water pump and the problem was they were expensive and we're going to start the car up go for a short drive and i'll share you what my overall driving experience because i just drove a honda accord and we'll talk about the overall driving experience then i'll explain in short why in fact we bought the toyota camry over the honda accord And these latest Toyotas still sport these beautiful analog gauges. This is another element that we really love about these cars. Let's throw her in gear and go for a ride. Okay, one thing I'll comment is the Honda probably has a slightly sportier driving experience from the, the seat of the pants. It feels a little bit more urgent in the steering and the handling, but the Camry feels everything you'd expect and more. It's not the sedans of old where you felt like you're wallowing along. These cars, they feel very sporty, even out of the box. We're talking about a four-door sedan that's not a BMW, that's not an Audi and yet it handles very flatly there's a little bit of roll but it's actually a very easy car to live with you know the engine there's a little bit of a drone and when you get on the accelerator you know you do definitely get some of that extra noise okay well let's merge onto the freeway and see how it accelerates as we get onto an on-ramp and I'll kind of let you know how this thing gets up to speed neither the Toyota Camry nor the Honda Accord and base trim are going to be particularly fast both with around 200 horsepower um, neither of which are gonna win a whole lot of races but they are peppy get onto the freeway and it accelerates nice and we're doing pretty much freeway speed and that was pretty effortless. 
The only difference, of course, with this versus going with the V6 is you're gonna hear a little less engine noise with the V6. The way we look at this, the Camry was the car to buy. Honda Accords are great. If you want that car that's a little bit more sport tuned, you know, the uh, Accord also has the upscale 2.0 turbo in the Touring. It gives you a little bit more power. You can get up to about 250 horse. It's a very lively experience. And you could, for a while, get that in a manual gearbox. So that was a kind of a fun car. But now that they gave up with the manual and Honda's going CVT and auto, just like Camry, it's all the same. I'm gonna go with what I know. Toyota has always been the most reliable car on the market between Toyota and Lexus, and ultimately the looks of it, and day-to-day -day drivability has all the features you need. The Toyota was the car of choice. Both cars have a few little common issues. The Toyota actually has a couple of things worth mentioning. There's been a few issues with electrics. I know that infotainment screen here was fine, but we lost the audio on this. And this is a brand new car with 5,000 kilometers on it. The Denso fuel pump is an issue that was a problem recalled for some vehicles. It would stop cutting off the fuel and of course the vehicle could stall potentially in a dangerous situation automatic transmissions occasionally were weak and the big thing with toyotas often the brakes are a little undersized tend to incur some vibration with time under some hard braking but other than that the engines most of the time the transmissions and most other parts hold up very very well with time unfortunately many years of the honda accords sadly went through a series of failures a lot of the accords up till the last couple of years have seen some substantial transmission failures automatic transmission failures that's why I say if you're gonna go with the Accords go with the touring and the manual gearbox from a couple years back that is almost bulletproof but unfortunately automatic transmissions were problematic they also had vibration issues sometimes related to wheels and brakes sometimes they also had issues with backseat access and of course some door handle door lock problems but generally speaking Honda Accords are quite dependable as well just keep an eye on that 1.5 liter turbo 4 that one could be a butt muncher now with all of that said everyone you're definitely gonna love that that's all about the mercedes versus toyota quality experience and comparison hope to see each and every one of you on the next one we'll see you real soon bye bye